Okay, so there. Hi guys, we are doing our fourth interview today. It's Shkola Australia and Tatiana Davidova, and we've got another beautiful guest today talking about everything uh, health and medicine. Diane, um, good afternoon. You guys in lockdown, I know that, but we're not going to talk about the lockdown today. Just to take your mind off uh, all these things that are happening in your state, let's talk about you and your job, your career. So if you could introduce yourself and maybe tell us briefly about your background and your field of um, work. Okay, so um, my name is Diane and uh, I work as a medical sonographer in a public hospital. I've been there for, uh, I think, 12, 13 years now. Um, and um, my background is uh, I worked as a radiographer uh, as in medical imaging for seven years prior to my uh, um, career in sonography. So uh, before that, I did my um, VCE. That was the very first year of uh, VCE. In Victoria, so that was um, quite interesting. <laughs> How was it interesting? <laughs> Tell us about it because it's it's very relevant to anyone who's going to listen to us. Okay, so um, nobody knew what was happening. I don't think people who designed VC knew what was happening. They were making things up as we went along, so nobody really knew what it's going to be in the end. So we just rolled with the punches and did our work and did our exams and ended up with a score. Oh. Um, which we, like the first ATA, nobody knew what ATA was and how it worked. And um, we had nothing to compare it to in the past. So you couldn't really look up previous years ATA and say, this is what I need to get to get to a certain degree. So it was very up in the air and yeah, nerve wracking really. So at that point of time, because you've mentioned you did your ESL, Russian physics, chemistry, biology and maths. So did you know back then that you will be pursuing career in applied science or that was just a choice because you enjoyed the subject and you knew you could do well in those subjects and get a score which would allow you then to maybe you know pursue all sorts of different things it was a combination of things because uh i was an esl student which means english a second language so i was in the country for about four to five years. So my English wasn't bad, but it wasn't great. And um, I excelled in science subjects and STEM subjects. Well, because I am science minded, but I also didn't have really much choice because <laughs> uh, humanity is all English and yeah. I didn't have that. So I could have got steered into that because of my English. Um, and the second thing was in year 10, we did um, uh, work experience and I ended up uh, doing work experience for a friend of a friend of a friend. Um, and he used to work in um, optical shops. So the people who uh, sell glasses and uh, lenses, and they actually make them as well. Um, so I got to spend some time with the optometrist and I really liked what that entailed. And I thought that that would be a perfect career for me. Um, mm. Yes, physics, I did physics, I liked physics. Um, there was medicine involved, but no blood <laughs> and no needles, which I hate, I don't like needles. So um, yeah, that was, that's basically what happened. I, I selected my subjects so that I could go into sort of medical field, but I didn't want to do medicine as such, and I didn't want to do nursing. I am squeamish. Um, <laughs> well, I used to be anyway. <laughs> when I was younger. Before um, kids. Pretty much, yes. Um, so yeah, I didn't want the blood and the guts and everything else. So uh, a light help sounded like a good idea. Mm. Sorry, I have a grandfather clock in the background. That's all good. Here. That's the real life of a mom of, you know, school kids. That's all normal. <laughs> yeah, it goes off in the most inappropriate times, but that's okay. So um, yeah, that's why I chose the subjects I did. Okay, so now, after you have graduated, you you um, went for Bachelor of Applied Science in Medical Radiation, which is medical imaging, and then um, you followed up with the uh, diploma in medical ultrasound. That was just specialization that you felt that you need to add on to, you know, pivot into a specific field, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. 
So the way it works um, is when, you know, like the VTAC, we have to put our preferences. The medical radiations was my second preference. The optometry was my first, and then I had a few other preferences. Uh, and um, I actually got uh, quite a good ATAR um, that could have gotten me higher than the course that I selected as my second choice, but I didn't really see myself doing anything else. Um, I didn't get very little <laughs> uh, to get into the um, optometry. Optometry. Mm. Yes. So um, I decided not to take any chance and just go for the second um, second choice, which was a good choice because it had a very good um, selection of subjects that I quite enjoyed. There's a lot of physics in there. There's biology, like uh, anatomy, physiology. Um, there was psychology, which I also quite enjoyed. Um, there was IT, like computers. We had to do some programming because we work with computers and there's a lot of uh, computing involved in our job. Um, so I, I looked at the subjects and I thought, you know what, that looks like a really great course because I would really like to do these things. Um, and uh, the, the, you have to remember that um, medical radiations, it's a very big uh, umbrella. Uh, it's not just medical imaging, it's also um, radiation therapy and nuclear medicine, which are also part of medical radiations. And um, the RMIT course that I did uh, has three streams. So the first year is general year, everybody does the same subjects, and then in the second year, you decide which stream you're going to go into, okay? Uh, depending on whether you like those subjects that we did in the first year or you didn't. Um, and uh, I don't know if people are aware of medical um, uh, radiation therapy and uh, nuclear medicine, what they do. Um, it, it, it's a very long story, really. <laughs> I don't know if we have enough time. That's okay. Uh, I mean, people can obviously look it up uh, and read the descriptions of the courses, but what, what's important that what you're saying is that you are given a year to suss the industry more or less and then and many unis you know they they have that model they uh, even by allowing double degrees they, they give you the taste of plates of mm -hmm. subjects and specializations and then you niche down that's right you niche down so i chose the medical imaging the radiography course and that put me into that imaging stream right. um uh, so after that, after I finished that course, um, that was, uh, I got my first job and I worked in that first job for seven years. Mm. Um, yes. So as a radiographer and as a radiographer, you do a lot of stuff, um, uh, in terms of different modalities. It's not just x-rays. It's a lot of other things. So, uh, you get to work as a mammographer. Mammographer is a person who takes x-rays of the breast, female breast. Um, also, you get to work as a CT technician. We do CAT scans. Mm. Um, there's also MRI, magnetic resonance imaging. Uh, that's a noisy one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> and also, the ultrasound is another modality that we use as a medical imaging um, modality. So, when you work in the industry as a radiographer for a few years, you get to um, get a taste of a everything a little bit and um you you kind of look at it being a radiographer is great but it also a little bit limiting after a while because mm. you, you learn as you go and then to the, the there comes a point in your career where you like you've learned everything that there is and you get a little bit bored mm. so you you try to think okay what do i want to do next so um, where, where can you go from the skill yeah. with the skill set that you've got? So some people, what they do, they stay as a radiographer and they specialize in something that they like or something that their job gives them training to. Okay, so uh -huh. sometimes you just don't get to do what you want, but you get to do what there is. Mm. what's available so for example if you're working in the place that where there is no magnetic resonance imaging machine then they, they can't train you in it mm. okay so you get to train into something else what they have um so i was lucky that i was able to secure a trainee position with my uh job as a radiographer and um 
it was an in-house uh, kind of job. They gave the uh, training positions to people who worked with the company for uh, quite a while. Mm. And because I've been with them for quite a while, I was sort of the, uh, the prime candidate to, to be promoted, I guess, because it is promotion because you get more money, basically. After yeah. you. Yes, um, it's a different grade. You go up a grade, you know. Um, you can go uh, up a grade if you're doing, uh, for example, education. If you are mentoring a student and uh, you're uh, talking to universities and um, that's, that's a grade up, then you can also do uh, management. That's another grade up. You can do um, another modality. That's another grade up. So there's a lot of um, opportunities to grow. In so career. just to summarize, is as a sonographer, once you've um, acquired the um, to, uh, the tools of the trade, the actual machinery that's involved, then the possible pathways from there are you are consulting to uh, you know maybe to another no, no. You teaching don't training. Just you training. can you can do tra training and teaching, yes, because. Mm. Um, then you also have to do some other courses in education. Okay, so you have to uh, upskill to be able right. to train, like so Cert 4 in training and assessment, yeah? Cool. Yes, yeah. so if you are involved in, in training, then you have to do some educational um, uh, training for yourself first. Yeah. Um, then if you- Leadership, you leadership you mentioned, in, in like going into leadership. You Yes, if you want to be in leadership, maybe a business course, um, you know, something like that, because leadership positions also involves uh, managing a business, really. Mm. Um, um, there's a lot of different options. And um, I chose uh, sonography because I'm not a leader. <laughs> and um, I just, I was always interested in uh, the physics part of it. I just enjoyed the physics uh, subject in the uni. And when we did a little bit of ultrasound um, physics, I kind of liked it. And I thought, you know what, I'd probably be good at, in this. Um, and it took me um, a few years to train. Uh, problem is when you're working full time and you have a family, and I was already over the age of 30. <laughs> yeah, I know um, how you felt every yes. single bit of it. I'm doing it right now. What was I thinking? <laughs> It's, it's very, very difficult, but it's possible. I mean, that's a few gray hairs. You can't see them. I've, uh, I've colored my hair. But um, so basically what happened was that um, you had to um, study as well as work at the same time. Um, and um, it's not easy because uh, the assignments are done at four o'clock in the morning. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I don't, re I don't recommend it to to anyone who is uh, already has kids and, and, and family to look after because it's very, very stressful. But the, I, I'm saying guys do it earlier than later, <laughs> if you can. Or do it slow, like I do, one subject at a time. <laughs> yeah, I try that, but it, no, I had to do it sooner, but anyway, it's done. And um, I, I really like my job because um, it's, it's very rewarding. Um, you have all this knowledge and skill and you get to use it every day um, to help doctors diagnose patients, really. Mm -hmm. So you are kind of their eyes. You are their, you know, their vision. <laughs> you are a step that is between the diagnosis and, you know, and not kind of thing. So um, it's, it's very rewarding in that uh, way. Um, also learning new things because things are not stationary, they're moving in mm. terms of, you know, um, our machines are getting better. The, uh, the, the things we can do with these machines are getting more diverse. So um, it's not like you've learned something and it's just gonna stay the same, no. You have to learn new machines, you have to learn new modalities, you have to learn new things. Um, and we have, to stay registered as a sonographer or as a radiographer, you have to have a certain amount of uh, continuous education points every year, mm. okay? And you have to log them in. So um, 
you can lose your registration and you can't work if you don't do continuous education. Okay, so uh, for three years for triennium, you have to get, I think, uh, 60 points. So mm. Each point is one hour. So it's 60 hours of continuous education at minimum. Okay, so um, it, it, continuously learning, and it's good because it, it keeps you, um, you know, your brain working. And Alive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it makes it interesting and you, you feel, um, I don't know, you, you feel good makes me feel good i don't know about other people so for someone who is considering this pathway we could say that um there's a lot of technology you know manipulating different technology that is involved and you have to be prepared because of the development of the technology and the improvements that are happening you will be retraining regularly every couple of years um and you also need to, on the side, maintain professional development to sustain your registration as a sonographer. And then if you sick of all of that, like you, you reach the point, you're the senior, everybody go to Diane if something breaks or doesn't work, she knows it all. And then you decide, well, now I'm ready maybe to take a leadership position or maybe I'll teach that. You still need to um, obtain an additional qualification to allow you to do that because we're talking about the medical field. Yes. And well, so in, in sonography, there are a lot of different um, uh, areas um, mm -hmm. because the body, um, you know, it's complex and uh, you cannot know everything about everything. That's why we specialize. This is why you have specialists. Um, you have GPs that know, uh, you know, a lot about everything, but not everything. Mm. Um, and then you have specialists that know a lot about something that is small, but they know everything about that area. So this is the same with sonographers. We have different uh, areas that we specialize in. So I um, am a general sonographer. I do everything. Okay, but I specialize in uh, obstetrics and gynecology, which is uh, pregnancies and uh, female health. Um, and uh, yeah, so when you reach the, you know, your, your peak, you can specialize <laughs> as well. Mm. And so with your, with your stream, is it more um, um, complications or you just, you know, scanning all the pregnancy stages? Like what, what do you get okay, so like on a daily basis? <laughs> <laughs> this is interesting. You can do uh, just general population. It's called screening or, um, you know, um, primary mm. uh, scanning. And then there's tertiary referrals, which this is where they um, work with abnormalities and all the pathology. So I work in the um, sort of screening sessions, like um, general population comes in and I and a lot of normal, and then I find something abnormal. This is where I send them off. Well, not me personally, but the radiologist sends them off to a tertiary place where they start working out how abnormal is their abnormal. Right. So like, you carry a lot of responsibility to pick something or, yeah. Because we're like that... a thief. We're trying to catch out all the um, abnormal things, and then mm. we pass them on, and they're trying to work out what exactly is wrong and how is it going to uh, pan out for the baby if it's born and when it's born. Mm. So right. then, this is one of the other things you can do. You can go into tertiary uh, ultrasound and work uh, in a specialized clinic. You can work for a um, sports club uh, with, with sports uh, musculoskeletal ultrasound. You know, mm. those uh, AFL um, players, uh, soccer players, whoever, if they torn a muscle, they probably would go to ultrasound first because it doesn't involve any radiation and it's the cheapest um, option out of. MRI. Yeah. Uh, so first you go to ultrasound, and then if they can't find something wrong, then you have to go and do MRI because it's more expensive and it's just more hassle. But yeah, there's a, there's a lot of things you can do in ultrasound. So, um, okay. So I'm just wondering, um, what's your um, what well next step like you 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 feeling pretty good where you are actually let's just ask one more question is there anything you don't like about your job we're not going to tell your boss oh, you can tell my boss she knows um <laughs> so if you're working in a in a busy place like a hospital that has um um emergency department you have maternity department you have inpatients uh, theater 
if you have patients coming in from the um, from the street, so to speak, um, you are under pressure time-wise because each scan should take about half an hour, okay? Mm. And you are pressed, excuse me, scan. sorry. That's all good. <laughs> um, you are pressed to do a good scan, a comprehensive scan, uh, not miss anything, okay? In a very short amount of time, um, and you are doing it on a patient that is in pain or distressed or bleeding or uh, throwing up or wanting to go to the toilet, but they're on the bed and they can't get to the toilet. Yep. Yeah. And so you have to actually um, give them the pun enjoy. <laughs> um, but it, it comes with the job. It's, it's something you have to do. Um, in, in uh, healthcare, this is what you do. You work with people and people come, you know, with their problems. Oh, then, look, I, I've got a perfect analogy for that. It's like you are standing in the room of 32 children and you have 45 minutes to teach them something. And one has dyslexia, one has special need, the other one is picking their nose, the other one is doing something else. So very similar. Very scenario. similar. Like, I mean, I think a lot of jobs will have those time, time pressures or, you know, um, so I don't enjoy that part, but you get to kind of um, get used to it and pace mm. yourself and not freak out and not go, you know, I am having anxiety attack. You kind of sort of go into like Zen zone and it's like, okay, I'm just going to focus at one thing at a time and try and do a good job. And if I get to that patient by that time, I'm, you know, so be it. Um, okay, so now we're kind of going through stages, like for somebody who is taking up this career, they know, okay, I train in the machines and I train, I specialize. So what would be the next career progression for someone like you, like in whatever? Okay, so yes. uh, I had options. Um, I was approached by uh, my management about the senior position where I would be like a leader. Um, I declined that because um, I have family responsibilities and mm. I don't have to work full time anymore. Plus, I have mm. um, health issues with my back, which is another thing I have to mention because when you work in uh, um, as a sonographer, you do a lot of shoulder movement and uh, you get problems with your neck oh. and your shoulders and your back. Um, so yeah, that's that's it takes toll on your uh, body because there's a lot of rep repetitive movement and you can you can ask any hairdresser they have the same issue um, right yeah so, that's um, actually good insight because you know many people might think oh it's just like you know you scan people well yeah but <laughs> you sit there for eight hours and you're just moving your arm up and down um, um and it's it's not easy no it's not and plus your posture and sometimes you have to lift patients sometimes you have to lift things um, mm. which if you don't do it correctly you um you do damage to your back <laughs> yeah. um so, so the plan is just to stay where you are like until the kids are grown up and you can then think about yourself again. Well, it depends <laughs> if you have if you have ambitions and you mm. want and you have that opportunity, you have the opportunity to do more. You can go into management, you can go into leadership positions. At the moment, I am uh, more of a um, mentor to uh, our trainees and newly qualified. I'm like the mother hen, so um, mm. I'm there just to catch them in case they, uh, you know, they, they uh, get a bit flustered. Um, and uh, I do training. I haven't done the um, educational course, so I'm not the uh, official um, sonographer, um, what do you call it? A trainer but you can train people at work. Yeah, so I am kind of his backup. If we have too many students or um, he's busy with something else, I'm the one who is uh, doing his job really. Yeah. Actually, now that you've said, um, can somebody open their own practice? Yes and no. I know some people who did. Uh, the problem is you can't work without a radiologist on site. So you have to have a radiologist and then... You have to have a doctor who mm. is working um, with you. You can't have a doctor working for you. Right. Cool. Yeah, okay. You the, can the, work for the doctor, but the yeah, doctor... Yeah, they're very special to... people. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So the, the, the radiologist is the doctor who does the reports, who looks at the images and uh, mm. interprets them and, and does the actual letter that is sent to the um, 
Dr. GP. Mm. That's right. So um, they can open up their business and we can work for them. Okay. But if we are opening our business, um, they can work with us, but not for us. Yeah, alongside. I don't, know, I don't know how that works, but that's how it works. Right. And the conditions, you know, if somebody, a young person um, just out of uni uh, with a Bachelor of Applied Science and Medical Radiation, in your industry, what is more favorable to work for a private provider or work for a private hospital or public hospital? What what are they? Okay, so you get what you <laughs> you get what you can. Oh, okay. is it job, competitive? Is it competitive? As a first job, because when I was finishing my degree, there was only one degree in Victoria. Okay. In RMIT. Nowadays there are three, I think. Ah. So are there and plus, you, we also, no, I don't know how about now, but we had a lot of people coming from South Africa to work mm. and also from, from Great Britain. Some of them came on working visas and stayed. And took uh, our jobs. And took our jobs. Mm. But we had short, shortage. We, like, we had mm. a real problem because a, a lot of people who, came, who did this course, they would stay in Melbourne. They didn't right. come to work in regional areas. Mm. So there was not many people. So if you have someone coming from overseas, um, you can give them an option, you know. Yeah. Get this much money, but you work in Ichuka, <laughs> where you get this much money and you work in uh, in Melbourne. So, um, yeah. But nowadays it's a little bit different. There's more courses and more graduates and, and, and amount of jobs is probably the same. Mm. So um, what about to finalize all of this, um, if we have a uh, year 10 student at the moment, looking back, I know that your choices of subjects, but looking back at it, what subject uh, for VC would give them a good foundational knowledge to make their life at university a bit easier when they study applied science? So chemistry, right? Yes, definitely chemistry. Physics? Definitely physics. Biology? Maybe. IT? Anything computer related? Maybe. It's, it's a different IT, but having basics of IT would help, yes. Uh, would you say math? Math, definitely, yes. Advanced maths, or we can get away with general? It depends what the course is asking for. If they have a prerequisite, then you just have to go by their prerequisite. Oh, that, that's, yeah, that's different, but how much? maths are you using on a daily basis Ooh, i can't say much but the physics part and the math part they intertwined plus okay. the chemistry part and the physics part also intertwined because we're talking about um molecular physics uh, uh you know atoms molecules on that level right so there's a lot i'm of not i'm not at that level at all <laughs> Okay, so physics, chemistry, biology, maybe a little bit math, IT, and you mentioned psychology? Yes, psychology. Um, I did not do psychology in, in, in a school, a school uh, but I had no issues with doing it from scratch in uni. And that was uh, useful uh, for the job you're doing right now? You do need to have psychology because we are dealing with... Um, uh, sometimes we're dealing with people where we have to give them bad news. Mm, of you have course, to break yeah. bad news, especially if you're working in obstetrics. Mm. When you know when there's a loss of pregnancy, um, you are the first line of kind of in first line of bad news. Yeah. Um, as as um, allied health, we're not allowed to give the. Um, results to the patients directly mm. for medical legal reasons you call uh, the doctor yes yeah, so we say look we'll send the results to your doctor you need to call the doctor and the doctor will talk to you about it right so we cannot give out even if i can see something really bad on that patient mm. i have to send them to emergency department for the doctor to deal with them i cannot tell them you know you have this this and this i have mm. to tell them you know what you really need to go to emergency department right now and actually make a call and say there's a patient on the way so um it's very difficult because we are in a difficult position where we have to dodge the question, mm. but yeah. in a way as not to upset the patient because they yeah. get very upset if you don't tell them because it's their health and they're there mm. and they expect 
to get some sort of information. So we have to be very careful how we word things, how we say things. We have to read people. We have to see if they actually understand what, what we're saying to them, because when they're in shock, they are not retaining information and not the instructions that we give them. Mm. So you kind of really need to know um, a little bit of psychology. Um, and if you, if you are going to give them bad news, there is a, a, a process mm. that you have to go through. So you can't give that to them suddenly. You need to give them little body language clues, little things that might give them an idea something's not quite right. Just to prepare them. To prepare them. That's right. <laughs> so, um, yes, it's not easy. And that's what, another part of my job that I don't like is giving bad news. Yeah, yeah, you just reminded me, I was that patient many, many years ago. And I kind of trying to think like about that girl who did the scan and like how she, what she did at the time. And I'm thinking now from your perspective, how you saying and explaining, I'm thinking, well, it was as hard for her as for me. You know, she's the bearer of the bad news and, or, you know. Um, yes. Then the problem is you, you, people, it sticks in their mind of what you said to them mm. for a long time, maybe a lifetime. So you have to be very careful what you say. Wow. Because, yes. Well, it sounds like sonographer is a very uh, <laughs> complex job. When, when, when I'm listening to this, you have to be good at this, at people, machines, and then understand, report quickly, scanning people. Um, there's also a lot of communication <laughs> with, with uh, other health professionals. Mm. So we are a team. If uh, we work with other people in our teams, for example, we have nursing staff that we work with that look after the patients. We have to work with uh, radiologists who are the people who report. We also need to work with referring doctors, um, the, you know, people who are working um, in the ward, the clerks, the um, uh, porters, the people who bring the patients. So there's quite a lot of people you have to deal with. And usually um, on, under quite a stressful um, situations. Mm. So yeah, it's a, it's an acquired skill and you have to, yeah, you have to be a team player and you have to be very good at communicating. Okay, well, that was actually very interesting uh, from the perspective of, you know, I'm always on the other side, I'm just there. Somebody's moving the pieces, all done. And I always thought, that's an easy job. What's there to do? But now, <laughs> thanks to you, uh, and uh, I hope that many of the um, parents and the teenagers would listen to this and they could see there's so many moving pieces. And this actually can be quite interesting role um, and with a lot of different uh, niches to to be a tour if you decide. It's well, that was really thing. good. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time. Um, and I hope that you guys are going to be free very soon. Uh, we have another week to go. Um, <laughs> oh, well. oh, well. But you know what? You, you know how it works now. You're the professionals, especially when it comes to homeschooling. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much and have a good night. You're welcome. So have a good night.